Happy days, happy people, and welcome to another Ulu Yoga Anatomy Lecture. My name is Cody, and today we're going to be speaking about the ankles. So we're going to speak about, again, this idea of stability versus mobility. We're going to speak about the planes of motion that each joint goes into, the range of motion that each joint should have, and then the dysfunctions that sometimes these joints suffer from, and how we can correct that through yoga asana, certain sequences, and sometimes some exercises that are outside of yoga um, and it's asana practice. So get yourself ready, get yourself a book um, or a pad or whatever you need to write down in. Get your yoga mat out as well, just so you can practice some of the small things that we're gonna be doing. And remember, uh, it's okay to play with yourself, to use your body as a way to move and just touch and prod the things that I'm gonna be speaking about. Um, this makes it a lot easier for you to understand what's going on from a theoretical point of view to a practical point of view. And, and then I will be demonstrating um, with my awesome assistant later uh, some different asanas that will help us release these joints, strengthen these joints, and do what we need to do to, again, just bring balance into the body. So with balance in mind, let's jump to the first joint, which is very much a joint that we need to balance, which is the ankle. All right, so the ankle, one of the smaller but very complicated joints in the body. And uh, in yoga, it's not a joint that gets injured too often, but it is a joint that we have to deal with injury a lot. Because outside of yoga, when it comes to athletics and sports and competition and just day-to-day -day stuff, we use the ankle a lot, especially athletes, especially people that are doing things like dynamic running or quick twist and turning movements in their sport of choice. Um, this puts a lot of strain on the ankle. Um, and this is something we're going to be speaking about quite a bit about this idea of strain versus sprain and uh, how we can use yoga uh, to create a little bit of a stable ankle, but also at the same time, a more mobile ankle, uh, which is something that we really, really, really want because it helps reduce this potential for any pull, any tightening, any damage that can occur in the ankle area. Uh, so first, let's just go through the planes of motion of what the ankle does. All right, so everyone, this is Monica. You remember from the other videos. Um, and we're going to be doing a little bit of just movements of the ankle. And uh, we'll be able to see what the ankle does on a normal basis. Uh, so she's actually got really good ankle mobility. Um, and we're going to be speaking about immobile ankles and how to deal with that uh, in a yoga practice. But first, let's see what the ankle does. So if you can face towards them, beautiful. So pick an ankle, whichever one you want to lift up. Great. And now with the ankle, we were speaking about this area called plantar and dorsal, right? So there's no flexion or extension per se. I mean, there is from a very basic perspective, but we call it plantar flexion and dorsal flexion because we're flexing those two areas of the fascial tissue. So to begin with, we're going to go with the dorsal flexion, which means pointing the toes up, right? So if you can see on Monica's foot right now, she's pointing her toes towards her knees. This is flexing this little region of the ankle over here, right? The top part of the ankle. And when we go into plantar flexion, we point the toes down. And again, remember, we're extending the dorsal, but we're compressing the uh, plantar fascia at the bottom of the foot. These two points of fascial connection are very important. You can relax for a sec. These two points of fascial connection are really important, especially in the feet, um, because they tend to link to the kinetic chain that runs through the rest of our body. So if you have any tightness here, uh, it could cause tightness in the lower back. It could cause tightness in the neck, even reaching all that way up. And so learning how to release the ankles and release the feet is a very, very important part of balancing out your body. Um, and we'll also speak about why this isn't the case so much for places that are more urban and why we suffer from this uh, in places pretty much where we wear more shoes um, and we walk more on concrete. But let's go into the other movements. So we did plantar flexion and dorsal flexion. Now we're going to go into just rotation. So rotate to the right. That's more circumduction, so just a small rotation. Yeah, rotation to the right, and then rotate to the left. Good, right, super simple. External rotation, internal rotation. 
then when you combine that with more of the other movements, you can get circumduction. Right, so remember, circumduction is when you're making a circle. Easy to remember, circle, circumduction, and you can go both ways. And it's usually a combination of different planes of movement. The other one is a very weird one to do. It's difficult to do our standing, but this is inversion, so coming inward toward the medial line, and eversion, going out. Right? Eversion is even harder. So I could even help Monica here a little bit, so relax your foot. So inversion would be like that. And then eversion would be like that. Very slight, right? Awesome. Thank you. So those small little planes of movements um, are generally how our ankle moves and how we keep mobility in the ankle. Do we do this every day on an everyday basis? Well, we should to a certain degree. And um, the thing with the ankle is it does get very stiff very easily if you're not moving it around. And this brings me into our daily planes of movement, right? So what do we do daily? We walk. When we're walking barefoot, let's say, um, you can kind of feel how you're using more of your muscles and how you're allowing your ankle to go more into a mobile state of movement. So when your ankle or your foot comes down, then the ankle bends in a certain way and you're using the tensile muscles around the bottom of the foot and around the top of the foot to create that entire movement. But when you're in a shoe, you're kind of isolating your foot and then you're just stepping, boop. You're not maybe walking toe heel or heel toe. It's just a straight stub down to the ground, um, which is keeping the angle of your ankle pretty one dimensional. But right? it usually doesn't go past any sort of 45 degree angle or even go in the opposite way. Uh, and this is what creates ankle immobility. And um, also when you're walking on a flat land, Right? If your ankle never has to go past this point or that point to get up something or down something and everything is just flat, then all it's doing is this all the time. And therefore there is no mobility or strengthening happening in the stabilizing muscles or your tendons and your ligaments aren't getting the elasticity that they would have otherwise if you were walking barefoot. So number one thing for you to do for ankle mobility walk more barefooted. I know, don't do it around the city. We don't want to be walking around a place where there's potentially shards of glass on the floor or walking on concrete is never quite that much fun, um, especially if it's hot concrete or there's stones coming up and it can be a bit damaging to the foot, especially a sensitive foot that doesn't even know what it feels like to, to touch grass anymore. But go to your park or in your house on your yoga mat um, if you live by a beach, the beach is a really great place to do this and just walk more barefooted. This simple action will gain ankle mobility and foot stability and this will start to change a lot of your posture, not only in your legs, but also throughout your entire body. Um, and it will usually help compensate for any roundings or any forms of lordosis in the body in a very subtle, small way. but. It helps, it really, really helps. So do this, maybe even just give yourself a period of time where you go for a, a barefooted hike in a very easy, easy, nice and natural place where there's not too much thorns or things to step on. Remember, we were born without shoes, so this is something that we should be able to, to have more of in our day-to-day -day life. Our feet should be out of shoes. Um, moving on. So now what if your ankle is mobile, um, is immobile? What are more things that we can do to kind of exercise that out? And what does it actually mean for us to have immobile ankles in terms of yoga? So in terms of yoga, it's going to limit certain asana movements more than anything, the squat, right? Or any sort of high lunge or any sort of activation of the legs. Because if you have this immobile ankle, it's going to start to compensate whenever you start to use your muscle groups of the legs. So whenever you're using your calf muscles or your quadriceps and you're going into this bent knee position, the immobility of the ankle, especially at the Achilles tendon, so the Achilles heel, Achilles tendon over here, right at the back of the foot. This guy, it's one of the tendons that you can feel probably the most easy. When this is tight, it pulls the tightness throughout the entire back chain of your body. 
Um, and getting this more mobile, again, extension, is going to help you gain more access to your squat um, so that your squat looks different um, but is more aligned and also gives you more access to your muscle groups so that your body is acting in a way where there is less compensation. Um, but again, it's better to see what this looks like. So I'm going to ask Monica to come back up again. Beautiful. Okay, so like I said already, Monica has really mobile ankles already. Um, but I'm going to tell her to go into a squat and um, a yogi squat. And we're going to do it in two different ways. We're going to do it in probably her proper way where she goes into it and she feels good. And then I'm going to ask her to pretend like she's got um, immobile ankles. And I'll maybe help her out a little bit with that. Um, so first, coming into the squat itself. So just lowering down, all the way down. Yeah, maybe bring your feet a little bit closer together. Yeah. All righty. Cool. So Monica can even just sit up a little bit more. So try not to lean that much. Yeah, there we go. So this is ideally actually what we want the squat to look like, right? With Monica's chest facing up, she's not leaning as much forward. And um, you can see her ankles don't have uh, as much strain on them, right, for now. But the thing is, if I had to let go, I can feel that Monica's weight is very much in my leg. So she'd probably fall backwards a little bit. And she has to compensate by moving forward. But with this little bit of excess help, so you can use a wall or just get, as a yoga teacher, you could do this for your students and allow for them to sit up with an upper facing chest. So let's look at the difference. So go back into your normal squat. Go all the way, yeah. Relax your hips all the way down. Good. So now Monica's widened her legs to gain a little bit more of that upward facingness. But you can see what's happened to the feet. So she's compensated for any sort of ankle immobility that might be there, or there might be something in the hips as well, an opening uh, or tension in the hips uh, that has caused her to make her feet go a little bit more outspread, uh, like they are now in this V shape. Again, ideally we don't want this more for the knees, right? So now most of the pressure of the weight is pressing the knees in this direction. And like we spoke about, or we're going to speak about, the knees don't like this movement. They like to stay in their hinging position so that they can gain as much stability as possible. So what can we do to try to bring the feet more inward without losing the straightness of the body? So start to turn your feet a little bit more in. Yep. Good. And then come down again and just go to your normal position. Yeah. So now you notice Monica has to lean a little bit forward to compensate for a little bit of the um, lack of stability in the ankles uh, or a little bit of tightness in the ankles. Right. So this is OK. But what can help us here is if we use a block to put underneath the feet. This will kind of give a little bit of stability. All right. So let's pretend that there's a block there. This would be here. And now Monica can probably sit up a little bit more. There we go. But the block would help quite a lot, right? And again, the block would also allow you to sink a little bit down deeper with your hips. So you still get that hip functionality. Um, and then there's a few more other things to start to work on so that you can get into that proper squat with your heels down without the ankles facing out. Um, and again, it might not be the ankles. It might also be the hips, but we're just speaking from an ankle perspective for now. Um, so number one is to check your ankle mobility. Right, so the ankle mobility that we're checking is of the uh, dorsal flexion, right? So that we can see how far dorsally we can go. There's two ways to do this. So if you just sit down, all the way down, and straighten out your legs, good. Um, and first, you can just see a non-pressured version of how you can bring your toes towards your knees. So squeeze your toes as much as you can towards your knees. Good. This is one way to check. This is a sort of mobility that is created through muscle engagement. So it's more of a isometric holding form of mobility through the muscles. Um, and then you can go for an assisted version of this. So you can grab your feet and pull them towards you. Good. So pull them as much as you can. So it's not a forward fold. You're just trying to see how far you can go with your toes. That's it? Right, so that's about 90 degrees, which is okay, but some people it can go a little bit more. Just to see what it looks like for different people, we can compare. Yeah, 
So you'll notice already I have a little bit more hypermobility in my foot, even just by squeezing it. So you can see my curve is a little bit more in. And if I have to pull my feet in a bit more, if I relax through the knees, it goes slightly more in than the 90 degrees. It's like a little bit of a degree difference. All right? Maybe from the side it'll be easier to see. So just face towards me. We can just do one foot. All right, go a little bit back. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So again, let's go to neutral, so relaxed foot. That's probably where Monica's at. And then I can make mine go a little bit more. So pull yours as much as you can. Yeah. So you'll notice there's a little bit more of an angle here. And then for Monica's, it goes to a certain point. And then if I pull in, it goes even more. And hers goes a little bit more too. So it's about trying to create a little bit more mobility here that can then allow for us to get a little bit deeper into these squat positions and get a little bit more ankle mobility. So this is one way to check. The other way to check is to see what it feels like with pressure on it. So obviously this is pressure off and you can always usually go a little bit more deeper when the pressure is off. But let's see, for some people it's different. So I'm gonna to pretend to be a wall for a second. So if you have yourself a wall at home, which I hope that you do, and you're not living in a wallless house, <clears throat> go to the wall and then pretend my foot is that wall. You're gonna first just bring your toes right up to that wall, right? And then you're gonna to start to bring your knee as close to the wall as possible without lifting your heel. So make sure that that heel is down on the ground. Right, this is now getting that same sort of dorsal flexion, but with the pressure being put on that front foot. And if you find that this is okay to kind of see how deep you can go, you can move your toes an inch back. So a little bit back. Yeah. And then try again. Good. Nice. And then move a little bit back again. And so you start to feel you're compensating a bit. And your heel starts to lift. So now there's a little bit of compensation in the hip. You can see the hips kind of come in because you want the hip to kind of be there. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of where it stops, is over there. Um, and again, different. So if you noticed, if you had to look at Monica's foot there, there would, was a little bit more flexibility when she had a pressure on it. And it's just because different muscles are being activated and different muscles are being released. So this is a good way to check your mobility. Now, what do we do to increase the mobility? Well, what Monica just did, what we just did now, is a great way to, to increase it. Right, so you do exactly that. You find yourself a wall, you press your knee against it, feel a little bit of a stretch. If you're feeling a stretch, if you're not feeling a stretch, then maybe your ankles are already mobile and it's okay. And then you move away, right? Then you again, just increase it until you compensate. Because remember, I'm not throwing my hip forward like that. My hips are staying parallel and then I'm bringing my knee down and allowing for that to deepen and deepen and deepen again. You don't want to go too deep. There isn't a kind of a place where you want your ankles um, to go super flat up against your shin. It's, I don't even think it's possible in a safe sense. So let's not aim for that. All we're aiming for is just a little bit of increased mobility forward. Um, and the next thing that we can do that's going to help you a lot with your squats and your lunges uh, is by putting a little bit of a padding underneath the front of your foot. So if you could grab the padded cushion. So if you have a cushion, you have a very thin block, big blocks are a little bit too big for this movement, um, but just something that's a little bit hard that you can place the ball of your foot on. So this is nice to do in many ways. You can do this with a one-legged squat or a, a high lunge, anything where your one foot is forward and the other foot isn't. And then you place the ball of your foot on the edge of the cushion, keep the heel down and just bend the knee. And this slight lift up again just creates a little bit of angle here. Right, very, very subtle, especially with this cushion. Just to see the difference, come back. I'm just going to remove the cushion. Right, so there we got 90 degrees. She's going to stay where she is. Good. Again, very subtle, right? Very subtle lifting up towards the knee. This again is going to start to stretch out that back Achilles tendon and start to get more strengthening happening here in the front of the uh, dorsal part of the ankle. Beautiful. 
Thank you so much. <clears throat> Super simple exercises, um, things that you can do every day during a class, after a class, use these props. And again, when do you know you need ankle mobility is when your squats are starting to pull into your back. Um, when you feel like you have to spread your ankles wide to the side uh, to go into a functional squat, or if you feel like you have a lot of ankle stiffness or pain. On the topic of pain, now we're going to jump to strains and sprains of ankles, but just in general as well. Um, so in previous anatomy videos, you might have heard me speak of this, but we're just going to go a little bit more in depth. So what is a strain? What is a sprain? A sprain is pretty much is if you tear, damage, or degenerate a ligament. A strain is pretty much when you tear, damage, or degenerate a muscle or tendon, right? So to think about this in terms of muscle groups, the area that is sprained the most is actually the ankle. The area that is strained the most, usually, commonly, is the lower back and the hamstrings, right? These two muscle groups. Um, and the difference being is that the one comes usually from a traumatic event where you fall and you twist something in a very weird way. The other one usually comes when there is a tightness or a stiffness and then there is a sudden pulling or jerking um, that pulls a cold muscle or a cold tendon too fast too quickly. Uh, the one, the strain, usually happens in moments where there is too little elasticity and the other one sometimes happens when there is too much elasticity or there's too much looseness. Um, so in terms of ankles, we sprain our ankles quite a lot because there isn't that much stability around them, right? And again, if you do have any tightness in the ligaments or this immobility in the ankles, then your angle of sprain is less, right? So that means you have less angle on the ankle that causes it to sprain. The more mobility that you have in your ankle is when your ankle starts to allow itself to fall, right? So just on kind of like a general way of thinking about this, uh, if someone has immobile ankles uh, and they're walking and there's a, a hole or something that they don't see and their foot has to do this, bush, like that, right? And then they'll twist into it, boof, and they'll probably sprain their ankle uh, because their shortened ligaments are now going to be pulled really, really fast. The ligaments aren't used to that amount of elasticity and it's going to probably tear or rip or inflame the ligaments a little bit. But if someone who has more mobile ankles is walking and they're used to doing this, so they do this movement on a daily basis, right? They allow for their feet to move around in multiple positions on a daily basis and they're walking and then this happens, poof, it probably won't sprain them as much. It might be a little bit, but it probably won't be as intensive a sprain. Um, and they'll be able to go into it and come out of it super simply. Um, body awareness and other things kind of come with this as well. But this is kind of the reason why we want to build up this mobility too, so that we can just help ourselves in these simple life situations. From an athletic perspective, sprains usually just happen because athletes of sports such as uh, football, basketball, um, running, parkour, gymnastics, anything where you're using your feet quite a lot and there's a lot of running and there's a lot of risk for this type of thing to happen for twists and turns. Um, it usually happens when your body moves in a direction that is putting a lot of weight and then your ankle slips or falls or does something weird and then that presses against the ligament. So no matter how mobile your ankle is, it's still going to cause an inflammation and pain. Um, what do we do for this in yoga? Well, when it comes to sprains, nothing really. We just don't touch it. Um, that's kind of it. When it comes to sprain, it's this whole trying to increase the, the inflammation by putting ice packs on it, resting it, um, and not using that, that same area again. This is going to help it. Um, and sprains usually do heal quite fast as well, like a day or two, depending on how mobile you are. Um, but in terms of release, there's not much you need to do. But for strains, it's the opposite. Um, and we'll speak more about strains when we go into the knee a little bit more. Um, and even into the wrists, but I'm going to kind of leave it there for now. <clears throat> and that's pretty much all I want to speak to you guys about ankles. Um, there is also one last thing that I'll speak to just from self-experience and again, just to keep it in that same realm, 
is sometimes what can happen as well as your ankle can go into hypermobility. Uh, this doesn't happen very often and is very sports specific. Um, it can sometimes happen if you take a step too early, but it's basically when that same motion, that dorsal flexion of the toes coming up, goes too much. Right, so your toes get a little bit too close to your shins. Um, gymnastics, uh, basketball sometimes, parkour definitely. Um, this happens quite often because when you jump and you land, the ball of your foot is taking all of the weights and if you don't have the right engagement or usually what happens is you shift the weight too much into the one foot, then the foot goes like this and it causes a little bit of damage in the cartilage of the front part of the ankle. So this is another, I guess, form of injury that can happen. Again, what do we do for it? Nothing. Literally, we just make sure that our ankle is safe. We ice it if we need to ice it, but we just let it heal by itself. Um, and so look after your ankles. Keep your ankles, ankles mobile. So every morning, wake up, do all the different ranges of motion that you have just seen with your ankles. And then walk more barefooted and do those exercises that I showed you now and it'll build up your ankle stability, ankle mobility, and it'll help you with most of the standing things that you do uh, in your life and also in yoga asana. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you are at all interested in learning more about yoga or becoming a yoga teacher, then check out our online trainings or even go to one of our live trainings in Copenhagen and Bali. And if you feel like there's something that's urging you to do it, then why not follow your flow and keep being awesome. See you soon.